Hi, what's up guys? Tony from Tucker Speed here. Uh, we just have a big announcement that we wanted to talk about. We have a couple of new riders joining our race team. Uh, a couple of local guys here from uh, Ogden, Utah, Brandon and Carson Colford. These guys are true grassroots racers. They, you know, kind of saw a couple of V-Twin track days and caught the bug. Uh, they went out and bought themselves a couple of bikes. Um, have been working, you know, a lot of long nights and working on their bikes, getting themselves and their bikes ready and hitting track days. And, but uh, I kind of saw their efforts and wanted to, you know, kind of help these guys out and chip in where I could and, and, you know, help their racing efforts and make it a little easier for them because I just see them as, you know, true, you know, grassroots racers that could really inspire a lot of other guys to get out there and start racing. So we really are excited to have these guys join our team and uh, we just wanted to tell you a little bit about these guys today. Brandon, tell us a little bit more kind of, you know, how you got into it and, and how you got to where you're at now. So, uh, just all the beach wind track days, dropping their videos, um, seeing a lot of the guys, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a couple OG guys that started going out on the tracks and really shredding them. And uh, I always thought that was cool. Uh, I always wondered if I could do it. And then I seen the opportunity uh, once Bagger Racing League dropped that they were coming to Utah. Because King of the Baggers doesn't have a class that we could race in until we get expert cards. So I just wanted to uh, be a part of it. And when they said they were coming to Utah, I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to be about it. You know, I wanted to get a bike and see if I could actually do it. And so I bought a 2005 carbureted rubber mount Sportster, like uh, the worst, the worst that you can get. Can get. <laughs> and, uh, but they were cheap. So uh, we were able to get into it and not ruin our daily bikes, which mad respect for all the guys that are out there on their daily bikes. Uh, I bought a bike. Actually, I found two and called up my little brother and said, we're going to do it. and. Uh, the rest is history, just kind of going balls to the wall, working bikes every night, and trying to figure out what works, what doesn't, and uh, just go as fast as we can and learn as much as we can. Yeah, and that's the cool part is that, like, you know, all you guys out there in, you know, YouTube land or whatever, like, sitting there on the couch or whatever, watching these videos of these races and stuff, like, wish that you want to go out and do it, like, yeah, just do it. these guys are, like, the testament of, like, you can legit go out there and do it. Like, go out and just find yourself a, a clean, sporty that you can start with. Start, you know, building it little by little. Get yourself the right gear. Um, get to a local track. Start riding. Do some track days. Get in a, get your license, uh, which these guys had to do. You know, take a class and get your license. Um, and, and it's definitely doable. It, and the proof is right here in these guys. Um, you know, they, they prepared themselves for BRL. They know they wanted to race uh, here in Utah for the first BRL race. And they bought their bikes, they did track days, they, they did some other races. Um, they got themselves ready and they went out and, and killed it that weekend. So Carson, uh, tell me, you know, you guys have kind of got the bikes, you know, give me a rundown, like, you guys bought the bikes leading up to the BRL weekend, you know, kind of what have you guys done to get yourselves and the bikes ready between now and then? Um, so we picked up this bike, it's a 06 uh, Sportster 1200 carburetor rubber mount. Um, like my brother said, one of the worst ones you can get. Yeah. Um, I bought it wrecked, so the whole front end was actually, the forks were completely bent when I bought it. Uh, I got it super cheap, I uh, rode it home to my uh, buddy's house. So I rode it home, it was completely bent, I stripped it down, uh, did the front end first, uh, threw some plus two tubes, some springs in there, and then some 14 inch shocks in the rear. Um, and then we decided we are going to go for our first track day. Uh, we needed a transport vehicle, and I was going to buy a truck, but I ended up buying a van. So uh, I have a Ford Call Line van now. It's pretty cool, That's I guess. <laughs> um, so then we went out to Bun Willow for our first track day. Um, had a great time out there, but we definitely learned that you needed a lot more ground clearance than what we had. I drug everything off that bike down to the, one to three sets of foot pegs, I think, in a matter of two weeks uh, before I figured I had to lift a little bit more. And then we just slowly started working from there. 
Uh, we got the bikes even got them going a little bit faster, you know, got a better suit, all the right gear we needed and just started going hitting all these track days and races. And uh, over time we just get faster and the bikes get better um, to the point I got dual disc now and uh, running at the BRL as the first time I ever run a dual disc on my bike and I gotta say that was a great upgrade I think everyone should do. Yeah. Being able to go, you know, fourth, fifth gear into a corner and being able to stop instead of blowing it. Um, definitely a lot of fun. Definitely get your adrenaline pumping the uh, faster you go. So I definitely think everyone should do it. And uh, just get out there on the track. It doesn't take that much money to do it. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, the proof is right here. You don't have to spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars building some high-end race bike. You can legit just get into this. Um, you know, the biggest thing is getting out and getting your license and getting some seat time um, and getting familiar with, with your bike. And then and then you can just start improving on your bike little by little, you know, improving your suspension and getting the right uh, wheels and tires and getting ground clearance and all that type of stuff and getting better brakes and all that type of stuff can come with time. And that's what these guys are now doing. They've been working on suspension and wheels and tires and better brakes and, and you know, getting the bike set up properly and uh, more suited for road racing. So Brandon, uh, kind of give us a race recap, you know, of your BRL weekend now that the weekend's over with, you know, give us a rundown, uh, you know, from rolling in on Friday to when you left on Sunday afternoon. All right, uh, so Friday morning, uh, get there, past Tech pretty easily. Um, just kind of hung out the rest of the day. Uh, I think we walked the track Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was nice, because that's the first time they actually let us walk the track which I feel is pretty important to do before you go out and ride one. Uh, Saturday came around, uh, hit practice in the morning, everything went well there. Uh, qualifying came and uh, I rode the whole thing, the whole 30 minutes. I wanted as much track time as I could possibly get. And I uh, let my guard up after they dropped the flag and I thought in my head that it would really suck if I wrecked on the last lap. And uh, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I, uh, I low-sided, and uh, I was going pretty fast, so it hurt pretty good, but I was happy with the wreck, as happy as you could be. Uh, low-sided, so I was able to just get up, brush the dust off, didn't really hurt myself. Uh, went back to the pits, and before the adrenaline wore off, I uh, made sure to fix my bike. I tweaked out the front end, so I straightened it up as much as I could, uh, bent the handlebars, uh, I had an extra set, so I threw those on and uh, relined everything, tied down the neck bearings, and uh, was ready to go. Felt pretty confident, I knew what not to do, and uh, Saturday rolled around, uh, still pretty anxious, uh, pulled it up in a wheelie on the start at the race, uh, so gotta improve on that comes with time and experience and uh, felt pretty good throughout the race didn't get a good a start as I wanted to uh, but um, maintain my position until the last lap and uh, there's some things that happened in the last lap I won't talk about uh, just know I'm gunning for you you know who you are and uh, hamburger helmet <laughs> yeah, yeah hamburger helmet <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I don't know I felt pretty good Pretty proud of ourselves uh, to actually get there. A lot of people talk about getting out there and doing it, uh, but I was proud of everybody that I raced against, including my brother. And uh, it was just awesome to be out there and actually shredding it and doing it and uh, seeing it, making it happen. So I'm gonna be more proud to be part of it. So Carson, give us your BRL weekend recap. You know, a rundown. You know, from Friday morning. Uh, to Sunday, uh, you know, how'd your weekend go? Uh, so it was actually a lot of fun. I mean, it was a great time. We got out the Friday, uh, had tech inspection, everyone rolled in. Got to see a lot of friends I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, so it was good to meet up with all those guys, you know. Um, had tech inspection, it went pretty good. Uh, Saturday we woke up and then I had two practice sessions. Um, they went okay. I was fighting a little bit of traction in the rear the whole, uh, pretty much the whole weekend until the race. But uh, I was feeling pretty good, and then qualifying came around, and uh, I went out on my first lap, and I was laughing because I was like, why is no one out here with me? I get back, and it was because I dumped fuel all over the track because my float needle stuck. So they kicked me off the course, I went back, and I spent a couple hours fixing that. But I was able to go out and do a 
go out for a second round of qualifying. Went out there and it was, it was pretty dope. There was three of us that went out and we all spaced out far enough to where we had the whole track for ourselves. So you'd come around one corner and you'd see your competitor all the way at the other end of the track, but you had the whole track to kind of practice. Um, so it was really cool and just out there riding with all those guys again. Um, and then here, and then race day, uh, everyone lines up. We go out for our first practice in the morning. It was going really good. So we line up on the race day and I'm right behind my brother and uh, he's getting ready. I know he's super antsy. Um, light drops and he willies. He goes straight up in the air and I'm laughing at him. I'm, I don't even realize I'm supposed to be racing. I'm just laughing at my brother Willie. And, and then I get passed by every single person on the grid. <laughs> every single person passed me on the grid. Um, I was able to pass two of them and I held, held it for a while. And I think on the last two laps, I got passed actually by a, this guy named Joe. Uh, he's drag specialty, he's one of the reps. But it was cool to ride with him, that dude can shred, you know, I'll give him that. A um, little bit older guy, but that dude can shred, so it was just a lot of fun, you know, hanging out with all my friends, and I'm um, super proud to be part of Tucker Speed, and just seeing everyone out there, it was, it was a great time, and seeing you ride, dude, you killed it, so that was awesome to see, and I uh, couldn't be more proud of the race for uh, Tucker Speed, and be part of your crew. Yeah, it's cool, uh, you know, super excited to see you guys' progression through the sport, and uh, see so you guys progress, you know, personally, and your bikes progress and get better and better as, as uh, time goes on. Uh, you know, really proud to, you know, put the Tucker Speed name on your guys' bikes, and, and you know, hopefully, you know, we'll inspire some new riders to, you know, turn their personal bikes or go out and buy bikes and, and, and get out there and start racing with us. You know, and get more guys on the track. And uh, I think you guys are, you know a real inspiration for a lot of people that are sitting on their couch right now thinking I want to get out there yeah, and you guys are, are proving that it, it, it's doable so yeah. um, you know so like I said uh, go find these guys uh, on Instagram uh, give them a follow they also have their own YouTube channel channel uh, Coford Racing yep. Um, yep. you know give their their channel uh, you know subscribe and, and follow them uh, in their adventures We'll be continuing to post uh, here on YouTube or you know on, on all our social media platforms about you know where you guys are going, what's going on, and and your racing you know careers and how things are progressing. Don't forget to like and subscribe here. Hit that notification bell. Uh, get reminded of some upcoming videos and what we got going on here. Uh, thanks for tuning in and watching.